you're listening to the Clean Green Talk podcast. This is episode 128. Welcome to the Clean Green Talk podcast. Join us on the journey to a cleaner, greener lifestyle. And now your host, Leslie Ruggett. Before we get started, I just wanted to do a big shout out to today's sponsor of the show, which is Maid Brigade. Maid Brigade's primary concern is the well-being of your family, and they recognize early on the need for a better approach to cleaning that would benefit everybody involved. You're going to love the way that they take care of your home and your family with their green cleaning techniques. So go over to maidbrigade.com and check out all of their services. Hi, everyone, and thanks for listening to Clean Green Talk. I'm Leslie Reichert, and today I'm excited because I'm going to introduce you to the zero waste lifestyle. Today, we're going to be interviewing Bea Johnson. She's a native of France, but currently living in California, and she has adopted the zero waste lifestyle since 2008. She and her family have changed for the better, she says, and she's not only happier, but leads a more meaningful life. So meaningful that she actually just did her last tour of 2016. In 10 days, she did 20 different events and created zero waste. How about that? B's going to introduce you to the five basic premises of the zero waste lifestyle. They're basic guidelines, and you're going to love how she introduces them to you and then shows you how to actually go through and do them. So, I'm going to introduce you to her really quickly. I'm so glad that you're joining me today. And remember, if you want to see our companion TV show, it's now up on YouTube. You can go to cleangreenlivingtv.com and it'll take you over to my YouTube channel where you can see more about what we're learning and doing through this wonderful journey. I'm going to ask you to do me one big favor and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any episodes. Let me now introduce you to B. Johnson. Well, tell me now, you were traveling and you were over in Europe and you did a huge tour. Yeah, I um, I, I do quite a few uh, international tours. Uh, when I travel to a country, I like to, uh, when I'm invited to speak in a country, then I like to coordinate lots of other speeches so I'm not going just for one event. So this past one was 20 events in 10 days. Before that, it was uh, 11 countries in 14 days. Uh, before that, it was 30 events over uh, seven weeks. So there is, um, you know, I always try to yeah fit in as much as I can within my trip. That's amazing. You are making a world impact with this book. That's fabulous. Yeah, thank you. I'm I'm really excited. I I have to say I would have never thought that. Uh, one day, uh, my uh, my blog, my blog, which then became a book, uh, and my speeches would uh, literally launch a global movement. Uh, today, thousands and thousands are doing this throughout the world, so it's really really exciting. So, tell us, how does a family like yours live with almost no trash in a whole year? How do you do that? So uh, we found that for the zero waste lifestyle to uh, be really achievable in our household, uh, for uh, or to be able to reduce our waste as much as possible, all we had to do was follow uh, five rules in order. So uh, we refuse the things that we do not need. We reduce the things that we do actually need. We reuse by swapping anything that's disposable for a reusable alternative and buying secondhand if we need to buy something. Mm -hmm. And we recycle only what we cannot refuse, reduce, or reuse. And finally, we rot, uh, which is compost the rest. It's as simple as that. (laughs) Well, that sounds simple because it's five R's, but there's a lot of work involved in all that, right? Well, the work... The challenge, I would say, for us was to find a balance, uh, to uh, find a system that worked for us. Uh, it was just also learning how to say no to things. So, mm. And that's the first rule, is to refuse the things that we do not need. And uh, that uh, is simply learning how to say no. Today, in this consumerist society, we're the targets of many, many promotional goods. 
But every time we accept them, we're creating a demand to make more. Every time we take a free pen or a free plastic bag, it's a way for us to create a demand to make more of these things. So, um, and then once we accept them and bring them into our home, then uh, they become, uh, they not only clutter our space, but then they will become our waste problem. So we've simply learned to say no to these things. And it's, uh, you know, in our society, sometimes it seems rude to say no. So we, uh, we have very simple sentences that we say. Uh, my favorite is uh, no thanks, I don't need it, or uh, if I am uh, uh, refusing food packaging, then I'll say no thanks, I don't have a trash can. And, you know, the, the people uh, that are trying to give me something do respect my choice and they don't question it any further. So what does a face look like when you say I don't have a trash can? Um, actually, at the store, when I so I buy my meat, fish, jelly uh, using glass jars that I present to the staff behind the counter, and uh, if they ask me, well, why do you want to do this? And I just reply, I don't have a trash can. They're like, okay, and then they put the meat, <laughs> fish, or jelly in my in my jar. So yeah, they don't really question it. <laughs> That's awesome. That, I mean, that, that makes things really much easier when you have a simple sentence like this. Yeah. And can you give me, when you talk about reducing, uh, give us an example of, of some of the things that we can reduce in our homes that would make a difference. Well, reducing uh, in the five hours mean, means adopting a, uh, a life of voluntary simplicity. Uh, or minimalism if you want but minimalism tends to scare people mm. uh, and the the reducing aspect is really going through your home and decluttering letting go of the things that you do not truly need when you let go of the things that you do not truly use or need then you put them back on the market you allow for others to have access to those things they are valuable resources in themselves so it's important to know how to share these things and then it will boost the second-hand market which is extremely important for the future of zero waste um, so simply yeah the, the second rule of uh, the zero waste lifestyle is to reduce so I would encourage you to go through your home and question uh, your true need for the things you you have and uh, or your possessions and it's, uh, it's important to start in a place where you're not really attached to things. So it might be the kitchen for other people. It might be the bathroom. Other people might be the wardrobe. Um, it's, it's all different for uh, different people. So, um, but it's, what's most important is to get started and not be afraid to let go of the things that you do not truly really use or need. I really like that phrase, truly need. You know, because there's a lot of times you just want, don't want to let, let something go. But when you say, oh, do I really, truly need this? Yeah, so for example, uh, growing up, uh, my mom did not have a vegetable peeler. And um, and I, I came to the U.S. at the age of 18. And I, I kind of, you know, I became a woman in the U.S. And I... Everyone has a vegetable peeler, and I always had a vegetable peeler in my home until I came to truly question my need for it. And, and then I realized, well, I probably don't need one. My mom doesn't have one. So I let go of it. And this actually has had a great impact uh, on our food, but also our compost output. Uh, when you let go of your vegetable peeler and you rely on just peeling with uh, a little knife. And personally, I'm not super good with the little knife, so, <laughs> with the paring knife, so I'm much slower. So uh, in the end, that means that I'll think twice about peeling anything. And I've learned now to only peel what needs to be peeled. So I do not peel uh, eggplants or zucchinis or turnips or apples or potatoes. And... Uh, has had uh, that has allowed us to enjoy the vitamins that are enclosed in those peels 
but it's also our compost output is way less than it was before because I think twice about peeling anything. So uh, we're wasting, in the end, way less food than we did before. And that's a beautiful example of truly needing it. You don't really need it, but you've been probably marketed to because you've been in the United States that every good woman has to have a vegetable peeler, right? Exactly. It was one of those tools that you had to have in a kitchen. <laughs> and so what are some other advantages? You've talked about not using as much and having some stuff in your composting. What are the other advantages of living a zero-waste lifestyle? Well, we found that uh, this lifestyle, of course, has... Well, it's not only good for the environment, as you would expect, but it's also been great on our health because we've been able to eliminate all toxic products from our home. Uh, today, I, uh, you know, I've been able to eliminate all toxic products uh, with, uh, and replace them with uh, white vinegar. So I clean my whole house with just white vinegar and Castile soap, which I also purchase in bulk. Castile soap is a natural type soap, and I use it to um, wash our hands, wash the dishes, wash the floor, even wash the dog. <laughs> um, and then uh, we, uh, today, uh, we also found that the zero waste lifestyle allows us to, uh, uh, to save a huge amount of money. When I started, my husband was a little worried when he saw me go to the health food store to go grocery shopping because that's uh, typically where you find bulk foods. And, uh, and he said, you know, we can't afford to live this lifestyle or to go to the health food store, especially because we started during the recession. We did not have much money coming in and it was financially very, very we were in a very uh, difficult financial situation. And I, uh, on my blog, people were kind of saying the same thing. Uh, so I encouraged my husband to compare our bank statements between the zero waste lifestyle and the lifestyle before zero waste. And that's when he found that we were saving 40% on our overall budget. This is due to the fact that one, uh, we consume way, way less than before. Uh, before I was always adding to our inventory. If I went on a vacation, I would buy souvenirs. If my mother-in-law visited, we'd go shopping. And I was always somehow adding to the number of things that we have in our home. Today, we're happy with the, our inventory. We're happy with the number of things that we own. We're no longer adding to that number. If we buy something, it's only to replace what needs to be replaced. And when we buy that replacement, we buy it secondhand, which obviously costs less. But we also um, buy our food in bulk. People need to understand that uh, when they buy something that is packaged, 15% of the price covers the cost of the packaging. It's not the manufacturer that's buying or paying for the packaging. It's, of course, the consumer that is. So when you buy your food in bulk, you make an automatic 15% savings. But we have also replaced anything that's disposable for a reusable alternative. So that means that our money is no longer thrown away uh, or thrown out the window. Because if you buy something that's disposable, it's you know, buying it, using it for a few seconds, and then throwing it away. It's literally throwing your money away. Today, we've replaced all these things with reusable alternatives. So we use uh, uh, rags instead of paper towels. We use uh, uh, cloth napkins instead of paper ones, uh, handkerchiefs instead of tissues. Uh, rags instead of sponges and a wooden brush. So we've been able to eliminate all these disposable items with the reusable alternatives. So it's translated into cumulative savings over time. And they've, uh, they've been so great actually that they've uh, allowed us to install solar on our roof and a gray water system, which reuses the water from the showers and the washing machine to irrigate our land. So it saves us even more. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's fabulous. And I'm looking in your book. So the name of your book is Zero Waste Home. And I've got the table of contents up. And one of the questions that I have is junk mail. So can you help me? Because 
Is there a way to stop it? Because all that yes. waste of paper, it's just driving me nuts. Yeah, I, uh, I think it drives everyone nuts. And uh, when we simply transfer junk mail from a mailbox into a recycling bin, it's a way for us to say, I love junk mail. Please send me more and more will be sent out to you. So it's important to learn to say no to these things and to take the steps that I uh, describe in the book to stop it. And we've been able to completely stop junk mail. Uh, so the so some of the few steps that you can take to do that are uh, to um, uh, to go on preoptoutscreen.com. Uh, it's actually I think it's preoptoutscreen.org, uh, and uh, you can take yourself off of uh, credit card offers. Uh, also, you have gmachoice.org, uh, and that's where you can take your name off of uh, direct mailings uh, uh, type uh, yeah, advertisements. Uh, and then uh, also go to catalogchoice.org, that's to take your name off any catalog. It's been uh, very, very useful, I gotta say, I used to receive a lot of them. And uh, they would fill my in my mailbox, and uh, and then it's crazy. Once you bring those things into your home, they clutter your space, and then you have to recycle them. But when you stop them, you you realize how much uh, simpler life becomes. Oh, it is. A, it's a real annoyance because when you go to your mailbox, and really one of the twelve things are things that you wanted anyway. You know, the other 11 are just junk, and it's like, why do I have to deal with this every day? Don't do this yeah, to me. Yeah, and, uh, and again, if, uh, you know, you don't take steps, then only more will be coming to you. So uh, when you actually take steps to stop it, it's amazing, I mean, how good it feels to go to your mailbox and actually see, uh, see it being empty. I mean, it's very often empty in ours. Uh, we... We receive very few things now. Uh, no longer it is junk mail, but it's, it will be uh, some um, some kind of mail that we need to receive somehow. <laughs> Something you really wanted, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so it is. It, we're coming. So we're coming up on the holidays, and you have one of the the um, chapters in your book is called "Holidays and Gifts." And are there a couple tips you could give people? Like to live a zero waste holiday. Yes. So uh, the the first uh, and most important tip I can give is to uh, well give a gift that you would like to receive. And in our case, as we've adopted a zero waste lifestyle, we found that the best zero waste gift is a gift of experience. And it's important uh, this time of the year to let your family know, uh, especially if you um, if you decide to uh, to live a zero waste lifestyle, to let them know that you have decluttered your home, that you've adopted a simple life, and you no longer want to add uh, to your inventory, that you no longer want the gift of stuff, but you very much welcome the gift of experiences. Now, when you send out that letter or you let your family know that you'd like experiential gifts, they're going to look at you like, what does that mean? <laughs> so it's important to give them examples of the types of gifts that you would welcome. So in our case, uh, when we got started, my kids were little and Probably the first gift that they got uh, as an experience was a uh, gift certificate to the local ice cream shop. And um, so my mother-in-law gave them um, this gift certificate, and I can't remember how much she put on it, but it took my kids six months to use up that um, that. Uh, gift certificate, and they realized how much better those gifts of experiences were compared with uh, the gift of stuff. Uh, they last much longer. But um, this is really, it is very important to realize that the zero waste lifestyle really translates ultimately into a life based on being instead of having. It's a life based on experiences instead of things. So uh, it's important to give those types of gifts so that you can expect to receive it in uh, uh, in exchange. 
And like what we're doing this year, instead of giving a gift, we're just giving a donation to a nonprofit and then putting that in a, in a card that just says, you know, we've donated in your name to them. Exactly. So this is another, uh, another one of those ideas that, uh, you know, gifts do not have to be material ones. Uh, they can be donations. They can be experiences. They can be time. Uh, I personally believe that, uh, that really what makes life rich uh, are the uh, the connections that we have between each other? It's the um, it's the human relations that are more important than things. And uh, giving your time to an elderly, for example, is priceless. They don't need more stuff. What they want is your time. So, uh, for example, to my mother-in-law, when uh, you know, as a gift, we'll give her. Uh, a dinner or a lunch with her uh, so when she visits the kids will go independently with her to lunch or dinner and she loves it this is a very uh, special time that she'll have one-on-one -on -one with them well that's a beautiful gift I'm sure she's just ecstatic when that happens for her yeah it's uh, again it reinforces the, the family bonds and the bonds we have between each other well, B, I'm, I'm really excited for you. Your website and your blog are absolutely beautiful. It's zerowastehome.com, and your book is available in 12 different languages? Yes, and I found out uh, last week that it's going to be also available in Italian, so that will be language number 13. I'm really excited. And it's a beautiful book. I, I can't wait to get inside of it a little further, but it's Zero Waste Home. And I thank you so much for writing it and really spending the time with us today to teach us your five R's. And I think it is, it's pretty simple. It's just going to take a little bit of thought, right? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, we've done things a certain way our whole life. Uh, it's not overnight that you can adopt a zero waste lifestyle. It's just getting used to uh, new ways of doing things. Uh, but if you keep an open mind, you'll, uh, you'll get hooked. And once you get started, it's actually really hard to go backwards. Uh, we could never, ever imagine going back to the life that we used to live. We now see it as a, uh, you know, life that was wasting time, wasting money, and that was not based on the right priorities. And ultimately, again, the, the you know, the, the, the advantages of this life is to uh, discover a life based on being instead of having, and ultimately that's what makes life worth living. Well, I'm ready to join you. So thanks so much for introducing it to me. Thank you very much, Leslie. <laughs> of course you know how to clean. In fact, you clean pretty well. But finding the time can't be easy. And what you do every day, the bajillion things you do every day, are way more important than cleaning. Maid Brigade gets that. And they're there for you. Just think what you could be doing if you didn't have to clean the floors, the counters, the stove, the bathtubs, the showers, the toilets, change the linens, dust, vacuum, mop. I mean, that's your whole Saturday morning. Maid Brigade House Cleaning Service can take care of all of that. Plus, there are no health risks with Maid Brigade because they're green, clean, certified, and safer for people, pets, and the planet. Maid Brigade is bonded and insured, and their maids are cleaning professionals, background checked, trained, and certified in green cleaning. Call 888-79-GREEN or visit maidbrigade.com. That's 888-79-GREEN or maidbrigade.com. It's your time. How will you spend it? So did B's story motivate you? It sure did motivate me. I am really intrigued by this zero waste lifestyle. I don't know that I could live so waste free that I could have only a jar of trash by the end of the year like she did. But it does give me some ways to look at things a little bit differently. And you too. So if you got motivated by this interview, you want to check out her website, which is zerowastehome.com. And you can also order her book. You also want to order her book, The Zero Waste Home. It's available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. Or you can go to cleangreentalk.com and take a look at our show notes where there will be a link to her book. I really enjoyed the interview, and I hope you did too. And let's try and live a little bit waste-free this next year. 
Thanks for joining me today. And remember, you can see more about what I do over at greencleaningcoach.com. Or as I said earlier, you can take a look at our new TV show, cleangreenlivingtv.com. We've got four episodes up, eight in the works, and you're going to love everything that we teach you there. Thanks so much and make sure to subscribe to that YouTube channel. I really appreciate it.